forward by most uh, respected Minister Harshwardhan ji. Amazingly, this, all these 26 pages are full of hows and uh, whens and uh, whos about how to run an institution. And all of that boils down to three lines at the end of the bill, which says, this is a bill, I'm talking about the Regional Centre for Biotechnology Bill 2016, a bill to provide for the establishment of an institution of national importance to be known as Regional Centre for Biotechnology and to provide for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. Very good. My question, sir, to the government and to the Honourable Minister is, how long would we continue with creating this standalone and uh, isolated institutions whose investment is high, the youngsters who pass out, who are trained, who are uh, educated there and who have done research, not research so much, but who are trained and educated there, they are brilliant. But if you go to Google and you search Indian scientists, you will find, you will be surprised to know, sir, you would have checked obviously, you will get a plethora of names, a list of names of Indian scientists. But the interesting fact is all of them have done research and found very interesting things where in the US, in Germany, in England, in some other country except India. And sadly, there are many brilliant scientists in India who have invented things, invented uh, usable things which can actually be very, very beneficial to our agriculture, to our healthcare systems. But there is no connect between the outputs of those institutions such as the one we are now going to vote and obviously pass because they are in a brute majority. There is no connect between the outputs of these institutions and the ground level as far as a doctor is concerned or as far as a farmer is concerned. Sir, I would like to point out just one small example. There are many such examples, but I'll just give one small example of a thing called Feronome, which has been developed by very capable and very young scientists at Bhubaneswar in Orissa. It's, these are like little plastic pellets and each one costs around 4 to 5 rupees. All you have to do for an acre of land, all you have to do is put four of these little, uh, little tablet kind of a plastic kind of a piece at four ends, four corners and one in the middle. And amazingly for a whole season, you will not have the problem of pests attacking your crops. And pesticides, which are very expensive, which are damaging to the health and the environment, and is destroying the groundwater of this country, will not be required to be used. But because of this massive disconnect between our researchers, our brilliant scientists, however few they may be, but their practical inventions and the ground level, we are actually not benefiting from these standalone institutes. So I, at the very outset, I am not opposing this bill of yours. That is not my intention. I do not, you know, I am a positive man. I do not oppose for the sake of opposition. But I oppose because our whole policy has been over the years, in my so many years in parliament I am seeing, that our policy has been such that we do not take cognizance of what is required at the ground, what can we do, how can we benefit the poorest of the poor. Sir, as you know, and the Honourable Minister said so, that vaccines developed by Indian uh, agencies 
are 40 times less expensive than the international brand. I hope I am correct, sir. Some of the medicines are actually going down to the public, are benefiting, no doubt about it. Something that you sell for 210 rupees, a Smith Klein or a Hext or a Merck would be selling that for 3,000, 4,000 rupees. But there is also the other aspect about our generic medicines. Our generic medicines, if you see their packaging, they are not necessarily packaged as international brands. But whatever their packaging is, a price of say rupees 140 would be written on it. But when you go and buy, they sell it to you at 20 rupees or 40 rupees. Now there is a confusion amongst the user. Is this genuine? Can I depend on this medicine? Will it save my life? Generic medicines developed in India have, have been able to produce antibiotics, TB, HIV, malaria, anti-malaria medicines. All this has been done in India. But because we do not take the care, we do not take care of the smallest thing, what is being done at the retail level, we are losing out and our people, if we are losing out, our people are losing out on the benefits that you are offering, that the system is offering. It doesn't reach the people. They are suspicious of generic medicines. On one side, doctors, sir, you are, your brethren, doctors are very hesitant to prescribe uh, generic medicines because doctors themselves need to be uh, made aware of what generic medicines are capable of. Some of them are frightened, some of them are influenced by multinational pharma companies. But I will not blame the whole uh, doctor, brotherhood, sisterhood just because a few people, few bad apples don't spoil the whole bunch. Same here amongst politicians also. There's a few bad bunch here, there, but that doesn't mean all of us are bad. So doctors are not all bad, but generic medicine generally is not being prescribed, which makes them out of the reach or it does not reach the people. And big uh, corporate hospitals are generally not going in for generic medicines. Sir, <clears throat> this institute in Faridabad, you have to take care whether Jats will break it down or not. But suppose this institute comes up, will it really produce things that would benefit the public? And if it does produce something, no, thank you. <laughs> if it does produce something, does it actually sink down? Does it go to the people? This is one thing where functionality of our inventions, of our creations are concerned. We have to take care. The other part is something that really concerns me, bothers me, is the weak need approach of our government. I am saying the government of India. I am not talking about UPA. I am not talking about NDA. It's all the same. Sir, so they were bowing down by, by, before the U.S. These people are kneeling down before the U.S. There is no difference. For example, there, there is, for example, sir, okay, ma'am, with all respect, sir, you know, we were all happy and proud of this government and uh, our administrators that they had the courage to give visa to a Chinese dissenter. I personally thought this government has the gumption, has the courage, has the, uh, what do you Hindi people say, manobal? That uh, it has the strength, innate strength, to stand up to the bully that China has evolved itself into. But lo and behold, last night, they revoked that visa. It's a shame. Either you did not give them the visa at all from the beginning, so you know you have a policy, or if you did give it, you should have had the courage to stand by it, where also you fell flat. Therefore, the other concern for me today is, so today, 25th of April, 2016, in Perth, Australia, there is this uh, free trade talk 
starting between the big leagues. Some of these uh, social activist groups have uh, produced data from leaked documents which says that pharmaceutical companies and the US government directly is putting pressure to ensure that, uh, that uh, uh, generic medicines will become far more difficult and far more expensive to be assessed, accessed, sorry, to be accessed in Asia and particularly in India. When these international NGOs are trying to talk to the Indian government, convince them that please do not falter, do not bow down before the US because your medicines are not only being, your generic medicines are not only being sold in India. They are being sold in Thailand, in Vietnam, in many other countries, uh, uh, neighboring countries. And that is where you should actually prove you are, a, uh, you are a superpower. It is another matter that you cannot give a glass of water to your citizens, that you do not have potable water. That failure is ama uh, amazing. But that is not the issue. The issue is, sir, that when pressure will mount on you, what will these single standalone institutes do? It is your policy that will decide the fate of this country. It is your courage that will decide the fate of this country. So my, before I wind up, sir, my, I will wind up, sir, I am disciplined. Before I wind up, I would like to plead to the government, before the government, and I am willing to kneel before you, but I do not wish you to kneel before China. I would say, do not kneel before US, do not kneel before the multinational pharma companies. They may bribe, they may give favors to many people around many people, but let us stand up and let us take a stand that we will make generic medicines and biotechnology as a science accessible to our farmers and to our poor, to the unhealthy, to the healthcare system. These two things, I, I believe, biotechnology will cover very intensely. I suppose that you first have to, I, I expect you to make up your mind whether you want to address these issues and take the country forward on a, uh, on a path to become a superpower which seems like a very vast far away dream because we don't even have drinking water. So all these paraphernalia, all these things that we are showing now as being achievements of the government, I would request the government to reconsider whether all this investment is worth it or not. And if you are making these investments, what will be the result of those investments? Thank you, sir.